Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel where we speak live. Speak what you seek until you see what you said. I know I haven't been posting in quite a while. It's been such a busy year for me considering the fact that yes, I am no longer a specialist. I am a corporal even though it's the same thing E4. You just have non-commissioned officer capabilities and for you guys that don't know any terms about Army, it's basically you're a leader now. You, have, you got the leader card. You don't get paid more, but you got the leader card. So I went to basic leaders course and if you guys did not check out one of the latest videos in which I packed for this military school, I had discussed how I was going to basic leaders course in order for me to promote or pick up the sergeant. As you guys can see, I only have two stripes. This is because you gotta, you gotta speak it into existence. I have not made the points yet to promote to sergeant, and so I am currently a corporal, and until I get those points, I will remain with two stripes instead of three. So hopefully, one of these videos in the next month or two, you guys will see a third stripe on there. There's always a reason for everything. I am not in a rush. I am not staying in the military, so it's not that I don't care as much, it's the, the extra pay would be nice, I mean. I know what my worth is, and I know exactly what I can bring to the table, and a rank doesn't really mean anything for me. I went to basic leaders course, and I was robbed. Yeah, I was robbed big time. It's basically a story time. I'm just going to tell you guys what I went through during basic leaders course, uh, what to expect if you guys are also getting shipped soon to basic leaders course, and... Yeah, I mean, overall, I had a fun experience. I would say 9 out of 10. That one point was because I got robbed. But I will tell that story in a little bit. We went to Nebraska. We, I think, drove three hours on, from Fort Riley to Nebraska. And we in process there. We got to know our instructors, also known as SGLs, small group leaders. And we got to know our classroom. You don't get, you get put in a platoon and in a squad. I think out of the whole class it was 146 soldiers and out of that there was only about 22, 23 females. We got into our platoons, platoons are not al alphabetical order, at least not for Nebraska. So I was put into second platoon, second squad. Now I'm just gonna say it, second platoon was the best, I believe because we had AARs, which were after, after action reports in which we just discussed how the cycle was going, how our instructors were, and it looks like our platoon only had good things to say, whereas other platoons had some problems with their instructors and blah, 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 blah. But I think we had a very uh, good set of instructors telling us what to expect as a non-commissioned officer, what we should be doing as a non-commissioned officer for our soldiers, uh, how to set that example, and how to find the resources if you don't know what to do in a certain situation. So shout out to Sergeant Alberts and Sergeant Schindaller as well as Sergeant Gansbaum. They were our instructors and it was a good a uh, good cop, bad cop type of vibe because our class was amazing. I cannot tell you guys how thankful I was to be in a class that was so open-minded and supportive and not inclusive. There were other platoons in which you could just get the vibe of like, mm, come now, you're, we're all here for the same thing, all right? Um, we were mixed with National Guardists, we were mixed with Active Duty, and it was a good ratio, although there was a lot more National Guardists there. Of course, most of them had their personally owned vehicles because they drove up there, uh, whereas national, uh, whereas active duty at Fort Riley, we all had to get on the bus so we couldn't bring our POVs. So it would really, really work out when we had we, when we were granted pass to go off post. Now, the first day, day zero, we don't get passes. But after then on, we do get passes from 1800 to 2200 and you can go out, you can go eat, uh, gym, that's when you wear your civilian clothes, X, Y, and Z. The rules there were still pretty um, similar to basic training. Uh, you had to march everywhere you go. Um, defect, you have to, obviously you don't do the sidestepping thing, but you do show up in your uniform. You have to be with the battle buddies, so one female calls for your, another female, or one female and two males just to get uh, credibility. And so that's how the whole 28 days was for us. Day one, we did the ACFT. <laughs> it was 
four degrees out when we did the ACFT, first of all, and second, it was so windy. Like, I can't remember the miles per hour it was, but it was ridiculous. Like, everybody got four or five minutes added to their two mile time. My two mile time is usually around 16, 17 minutes. I didn't finish that until 19 or 20 minutes, a two mile. It was ridiculous. We had leadership positions, student leadership positions, in which someone gets put as a squad leader or a platoon sergeant. I was squad leader for the first week, and then we transitioned into like, you would basically in that squad give your squad backpack, because that's what you had. You would give that backpack up to another person to take those responsibilities, and your job was simple. It was just to make sure that everyone was accounted for, that they had their personal equipment on them, inspectable items, and you just, basically represent the, the squad. Uh, classrooms were sp split up in between first and second squad and third and fourth squad. So for second position, there was a total of two classrooms. And yeah, so I was second squad leader for a week and then they, for a week and a half, no, for a week and then I uh, was not a squad leader or in any leadership position for another week and then they gave me the uh, platoon sergeant position for second platoon so I was the platoon sergeant for second platoon and let me just tell you guys it was such an easy job because second platoon was just really good at showing up right place right time right uniform and it was just super easy um, they were motivators they were supportive uh, especially when I got robbed and you know it was what it was it was what it was I made some really cool friends especially in the female bay most of them were national guardists um, and they were just really cool to hang out with. Really, really good to just be outside of active duty and just see how these National Guardists really work. Um, they had academic goals that you could reach. Commandant's list is 20% of the entire class. It's a 3.6, competitive is about a 3.7, and then you have to have leadership attribute score, which is basically, um, it accounts for the attributes and competencies of a leader. So that's like accountability and all these other aspects. And so a total of that is 600. You needed a 400 or a 450, I believe, and above, and you needed a good GPA to qualify for Commandant's list. And then there was honor graduate, distinguished leader was another one. So what I liked about it is that, like I said, we kind of uh, weren't really treated like children. They told us where to be and how to be there, what, what to wear and all these things. So you just showed up. Um, the classroom discussions were always informative, especially in our classroom. Like I said, everyone was open-minded. They brought different ideas to the table and time went by really quick. We would show up to uh, school at 0730 and be there until 1600. Um, Monday through Sunday, the only time that we really had off was Sunday morning. They granted us pass instead of 1800 to 2200. They granted us pass from 07 to 12 and we had to show up at 1300 in uniform for class. So, you know, I, I managed, we managed, could door dash. And so that's what most people did, especially that day where it snowed really, really hard. And it was about six, seven inches. I think we did a whole group pizza, like, a company pizza order and I think it cost like $838 to deliver so uh, but that pizza was so good because they had us eat MREs that afternoon and if you guys don't know what MREs are it's not the best thing I mean it's very nutritional as an NCO I started to realize the importance of understanding army regulations where to find certain answers because you are there to help your soldier make sure that they are set up for success make sure that they have the outlets possible for them to grow in their army career and honestly when I got placed in a team leader position as a specialist uh, I was already giving out counselings and all these other things but I didn't know um, where how to help my soldiers a little bit more I felt like I was just doing the bare minimum because I didn't know all the information but basic leaders course really really gives you a clear image of what an NCO is supposed to look like uh, what resources they're supposed to have in order to help them because not every non-commissioned officer will know what to do now for me I know till this day that I don't know what to do so I hit up my platoon sergeant and I'm like hey I have this situation this is what's going going on this is what I think needs to happen what do you think so it is always just 
going above and beyond, asking people if you don't know the answer. The last thing that you want is to be a toxic leader where people don't trust you enough to go to you to talk about their problems financially at home or you know even prevent them from thinking little about themselves building resilience uh, and all those things it's very crucial in maintaining that military cohesiveness and also that uh, mental readiness for whenever war pops up you know and you have to work as a group so our assignments look like um, we had about four essays. We had a sharp essay, informative essay, we had a compare contrast, and we had one more, I can't really remember. But it was uh, worth a lot of points, and they basically wanted you to reference regulations, reference articles, and make you do the research to understand these different aspects of, you know, being a leader. And the other three things that counted as a big grade or four were evaluations on drill and ceremony. So that's like left face, right face, inspecting, marching your squad. Then you had physical training in which you had to do the preparatory drills, whatever drill you got, and you had to guide your squad in doing so the correct way. And then you also had to do a informative brief speech in which you don't move your hands at all. You're supposed to stand still. And I did really good. The only problem that I did was the only thing that I did wrong was talk really fast. As you guys can tell in this video, I tend to talk really fast because my mind just go like 100 miles per hour and I just keep racing. Um, yeah, I just talk really fast. And the last one was conducting individualized training. So let's say you were taking your platoon or your squad out to learn how to shoot an azimuth or use a protractor for grid points. You had to brief them on exactly what you're doing, uh, the risk assessment, all these other things. So they graded you on those leadership. And then they also graded you on participation. What do you bring into the discussion? What important uh, subjects and topics and, and bullet points do you want to bring into our discussion today about sharp sexual harassment, um, resilience, all these other topics that we managed to go through. Now the things that I did not like um, was the counseling process. You guys should know that if you do TRADOC um, or even ARMY in general, they're always, they're always gonna have little pet peeves that you feel like aren't a big deal. Uh, but they are in the aspect of showing accountability and discipline. For example, um, how I got robbed. I basically managed to get a 3.72 in my GPA and I was placed as a platoon sergeant and everybody knew my leadership capabilities, even my instructors, and I got put into the board to compete to represent my platoon in a uh, distinguished leadership board, which would be one person per platoon, there was six platoons. You would have to compete in front of the first sergeants or a major and other instructors uh, to win that distinguished leadership board. So I competed for my platoon um, amongst five other people and I won that. And then I also got Commandant's List. And I did not lock my locker. They had random room inspections. They found that my locker was not locked and I lost everything. When I mean everything, I lost everything. They didn't just kick me out of Distinguished Leadership Board, but they also kicked me out from Commandant's List. Here I am looking at my 1059 at the end of the cycle and everything says far exceeded standard except for accountability where it just says met standard. I'm looking at my GPA. I'm looking at what the instructor said about me and yet I won nothing. Guys, I was also doing uh, my university school work I had an anatomy and physiology exam in the middle of that cycle so you can imagine my stress the essays were due back to back like once you uh, turned in one another one would have to be due in like a day or two and I was just stressing so I felt like I earned that place at least commandant's list and yeah I basically won the board 10 minutes later I get pulled aside by E7 who tells me that I'm going to receive a counseling and because of that I'm going to get kicked off of commandant's list and distinguished leaders I went into my classroom I told my classroom um, that I will not be getting either and they were surprised in fact they made a slogan of saying we stand by Albanese and that I was robbed because they knew clearly that I deserved that chance and 
and I was just super upset that something so small like a locker would pull me from that and if you guys don't know me I am an overachiever everything I set my mind to I put a hundred percent in for it. I had an amazing classroom that supported me uh, they did a little slideshow at the end where they basically did um, who's most likely to one of the guys in our classroom put it together and they put soldier of the cycle as me and they were just overall how do I say it? They reassured me of my position, what what I achieved, and so did my instructors. My instructors actually were very upset. Well, they weren't upset, but they were disappointed because they pulled me aside and they were like, Albanez, what happened from now, from the board and now, which was again only 10 minutes. And I was like, I didn't, I unlock my locker. I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you. And they were like, listen, we understand that the rules are very strict and kind of over the top but the, those are the rules and I was like I know I know you don't have to tell me but those are the rules am I still upset about it absolutely my first sergeant said it was unfortunate everybody else said don't worry about it you know who you are as a leader but for me it's just I don't know where my mind was that day and it it is what it is um, I'm not the only one that got counseling's either like my friend she got a counseling for not I think she was outside for not wearing her PC for a little bit and she put it on when was when she was corrected and someone just didn't like her response which was a valid response and she also got counseled and then you have people that show up don't pass high and weight have to get taped and if they don't pass that the first time they automatically get a counseling and then get retaped and if they don't pass then they get kicked out so that to me was insane because you're just telling them at day zero hey buddy uh, you didn't pass high and weight so we're gonna give you like three more days right three more days to lose weight somehow some way uh, and also you just can't qualify for academic honors so what why would someone want to try after that like that is just setting them up for failure to begin with because then why would they want to try these are my honest opinions. Now, like I said, the Army, I love what it offers when it comes to um, being cohesive with a team, getting to know people, just giving you new opportunities to grow. But then it's just these little things that the Army has with regulation. I will say that at the end of our graduation, which, funny story, let me, let me, let me pause real quick. I had a friend who got Commandant's List, okay? And on graduation day, he told me that he was gonna do the gritty across the stage after shaking for Sarin's hand. And I told him, don't do it. He was so mad. There was so many people there, family members, units, commanders, higher ranking people. And it was just so hard to see. He saw him after, grabbed his envelope, took Commandant's list away from him just like that. and. After graduation, we took a picture and we all huddled. They gave us our certifications and then our instructors pulled me aside in the circle, which is funny because we did a lot of... So before a classroom, we would have to say the NCO creed, creed of the non-commissioned officer. Uh, and at first we had like four or five days to memorize it. Once we memorized it, we faced the window, which was, you know, those windows that the instructors or people can see you through, but you can't see them. We had ones like that and we would just go and form up right in front of that and say the NCO creed and our instructors thought we were crazy. We would form a circle and do the same and have one person, which would usually be the squad leader leading it, uh, start saying the NCO creed and we just did funny things like that. So at the end of graduation, they did the same thing. We made a circle, they put me in the middle and they said that they had a trans, they had a tradition in which they would give a E5 patch to the soldier in their class that represented uh, being a good non-commissioned officer, represented the values of a non-commissioned officer, and they said that I earned it. It was very, very nice for them to do something like that because I'm not gonna lie, graduation came, they were calling all these people for commandant's list, and I know I shouldn't be envious because a Christian isn't envious, but it was a little bit discouraging and I was praying during graduation and I was clapping for everybody, 
But after that, God just had realized, uh, God had shown me that there are other people seeing what he sees in me, and it was very re rewarding. Overall, that was my basic leaders course. Again, it was like 28 days, very sad when we all had to say goodbye. I still talk to certain people from there, uh, FaceTime them. I'm hoping that I get promoted soon. I'm working on my points. I have about six more classes to finish to get my bachelor's degree. I get out in January of next year, officially from the military, and I apply for PA school next year around the summertime. So. Time is going by really quick. Um, that's why for the military, thank you for what you guys had to offer. Thank you for paying for my school and all these other things that I've learned, being a leader for sure. Um, but it's time to move on, do what I basically came here to do. It's time to move on and fulfill my dreams, do God's will, and it's just, I have so many ideas for this YouTube channel. I just need to find the time to do it. I hope you guys can understand. But thank you for supporting me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want different content, please, please comment. Feel free to comment on my videos. Let me know what you guys want to see. I am determined this year to start talking about the Bible more because let's be honest, I don't. Not as much as I need to, okay? And so I'm gonna try to do some weekly teachings, studies, um, short ones, and then I'm also going to try to do modest lookbooks. I know I just ordered a bunch of clothes from Shein for the summer, so I want to do a video on that. And yeah, it's just very fulfilling to know that you guys are out there praying for me. I'm praying for you guys, and let's just go ahead and cut the video because I know it was really long. God bless you guys, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. The creed of the non-commissioned officer. The creed of the non-commissioned officer. No one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer.